Hello, this is Will Brooks, and I'm very excited to show you the basics of coding for building websites. Building websites sounds complicated, hmm, and you would think you need fancy equipment and devices and a background in computer science. Well, I don't have degrees in any type of science, but I do have a passion to learn. As per my equipment, I'm using a budget iPad with no accessories, including no external keyboard, as you will see in the video. Today, we will learn how to create a basic web page using HTML and CSS. We will add on JavaScript in the next video. I'm going to demystify coding using simple terms that everyone can understand, and we're going to have fun while we learn. First, I will let you know the content of the video, and I will also have a timestamp in the description below. So, part one of the video, going to go to Replit and download the software. Part two, we're going to go over some basic vocabulary and some basic theory so we can have a better understanding of what we are doing. Part three, let's write some code. We're given a job to write a simple website for Will. He has a used clothing store and wants to sell four items. We said, sure, no problem. And part four, I will give you a short project to do writing your own basic web page with the tools you have learned today. I will have a video that you can watch after you have tried to do the project yourself. Of course, this part is optional, but the best way to learn is to do many hands-on projects. I will have another video out shortly that starts from where we end today. We will continue with Will's used clothing store, but add more cool features, including JavaScript to the web page. Let's get to coding! Hello, everyone. Okay, first, you're going to go to replit.com. You can see at the top of the screen, it says replit.com. Go there first and uh, download the website, and then you need to create a username and password. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I think, um, I think you can do that. If you have any questions, leave some questions in the comments. If you have any questions about how to, how to download the uh, website and how to log in, let me know, and I can create a separate video on that. But once you log in and create a username and password, you're going to be on a page like this. Now this is an iPad, so your screen may look just a little bit different. But on my top left, I don't have any fancy uh, arrows or anything, but on my top left, you'll see it says new replit, new R-E-P-L with a plus sign. So all you have to do to start a new page is click on that, is touch that, I'm gonna touch that. And then they have all these languages you can write in. So for today's video, we are going to go with HTML, CSS, and JS. And now, on the right side, on the right side, we are going to call this, um, you're going to title this, any title you want, but we're gonna, I'm going to call this, and you can call this Will's Used Clothing. Okay, because we're going to do a simple web page for, using, for Will's Used Clothing. And then, uh, you can do public or private, I'll keep it on public. And then we're going to create REPL down at the bottom left here. Hit that create button with the blue. And voila. There we go. It'll give it a second. It's coming. Hold on. Wait for it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now, this is great. Now, if you look at the top, it says in all the way at the top above line. Okay, we're going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 12 in the middle. <laughs> That's where we create our code. Fantastic. Now, to the right of that, where you see the HTTPS and uh, colon forward slash forward slash wills dash use clothing. That's where we're going to be able to see what we write immediately when we hit the run button. And I'll show you how that works. All the way to the left, all the way on the left, you'll see the index script.js and style.js. Those are our files. We're in the file of index.html and I'll explain more about that in a little bit. Okay. So now, it's time to learn some basic theory and vocabulary before we begin to code. The three web technologies used to create the majority of the websites are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'm sure you've heard of these acronyms before, but what do they stand for and what do they actually do? Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's a language used to create web pages. It's basically like a blank sheet of paper where you write text on and add images. The bare bones, very simple. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS adds colors and fonts to HTML. In other words, it makes your website colorful and very pretty. JavaScript, now JavaScript adds actions to your pages. 
For example, uh, buttons, pop-up screens on your website, 3D animation, and interactive maps, just to name a few. It brings your website to life. Okay, let's go back to the HTML. There are two main parts of HTML, the head and the body. And since I don't have any arrows or buttons and I don't, I want to click the screen so much, um, I'm going to work with the numbers from 1 to t 1 to 12 in the middle of the screen. So, the head it goes from number 3 to number 8. You can see the head right there. And then the body goes from number 9 to 11. Okay, so we have the head and the body, two main parts. Now, the head describes your page content to search engines and website viewers. Anything you put in the head will not be visible on your web page, just so you know. <clears throat> the body, on the other hand, is what people see on your website. So let's learn some important vocabulary now, just some basic vocabulary. We have tags, elements, and attributes. Tags are what you see that less sign and greater sign, those little like uh, those angles there. So. The, the tags are the uh, less sign and the greater sign. Now, inside the tags, we call them elements. So elements hold the content inside the tag. And then attributes. So attributes are used to describe the characteristic of an element in detail. So the tags are the less, sign, less, less than and greater than signs, those angles. Inside the tag are your elements. And the attributes are used to describe the characteristic of an element in detail. So, okay, don't worry about that so much. Let's keep moving. Now the HTML, let's go, let's start with number one. And I'm just gonna just do a quick description from number one down to number seven. Number one, the HTML document type declaration, also known as doc type. You see that doc type, capital letters, is the first line of code required in every HTML document. The doc type declaration is an instruction to the web browser about what version of HTML the page is written in. In this case, it's HTML5. Number two, the first tag in any HTML file is the HTML tag. This tells web browsers that the document is an HTML file, obviously. The second tag is a head tag, line number three. The head tag has an opening, line number three, and a closing, line number eight. Now, the only difference between line three and line eight is you see you have the less sign and then the forward slash. The forward slash and then head greater than sign basically tells it it's a cl it closes the, the head. So anything in between the line three and line eight goes in the head. And if you can see in line nine and line 11, that's the body. The opening tag of the body is line nine. The closing tag of the body is line 11. <sighs> okay, now let's talk, we're going to talk about the head first. The head describes your page content to search engines and website viewers. Anything you put in the head will not be visible on your web page. Next, let's look at line four, meta tags. <clears throat> so meta tags, are tags that describe your page content to search engines. Meta tags are important because they tell search engines what a page is about. So let's look at line four. Line four says meta char set equals UTF hyphen eight. Now, meta char set means, meta means data or information and char set, that C-H-A-R-S-E-T, stands for character set. So this covers almost all characters and symbols in the world, and you must put it in. It's important to declare the char set as early as possible in an HTML document because browsers will stop looking for the character encoding after 512 bytes and guess at which encoding should apply. So one, two, and th one, two, three, and four are necessary and hopefully in that order. Okay, number five. Number five is... <clears throat> The meta name viewport. Also, I would include that as well, number five. So, what is viewport? The viewport is the user's visible area of a web page. Now, that varies with the device. It will be smaller on a mobile phone than on a computer screen. You should include the following meta element in all your web pages. So, you've got your meta name equals viewport, content equals width equals device hyphen width. So, that basically, uh, that without a viewport meta tag, mobile devices render pages at typical desktop screen widths and then scale the pages down, which makes them difficult to read. So setting the viewport meta tag lets you control the width and scaling of the viewport so that it's sized correctly on all devices. Again, a must need. Number six, the title tag. Title tags are super, super important for SEO. They convey to the search engines what a given page is all about. Now we've got it called replit.com. Re, repl. 
IT. We're going to change that to Will's used clothing very shortly. And okay, the last thing in the head that they have right now, number seven, is the link. Okay, link elements. Link elements are used to create a relationship between a web page and an external resource or another web page. As the name implies, it links the two together. The link element in this case has three attributes. Remember we talked about tag, elements, and attributes. Okay, the first one is the href attribute, which tells it where to go. So if you look at H-E-R, href rather equals style.css, now go to the left, all the way to the left, and you see those three files again, the index script.js and style.css. Well, that's where it refers to, the style.css. So it's going to link this page to the style.css page. Got it? Cool. Next is the rel, R-E-L attribute, which defines the relationship. Rel, relationship? Okay. Between the link source and the current document. In this case, it indicates that it is the document style sheets. Basically, the style sheet in CSS, we talked about CSS before, basically defines what the web page will look like. For example, font size and color. Okay, the last attribute, the type, T-Y-P-E, type attribute specifies the internet media type, formerly known as M-I-M-E type. The default value is text forward slash CSS, which indicates that the content is CSS, cascading style sheets, which we talked about before. So that's very important. So the great thing about this is, oh, and then page, no, line number eight is the closing tag for the head. The great thing about this is that Replit automatically puts this into your page. You don't have to type this every time. But I do recommend when we when we uh, create a new file is to type this into your new file just to get practice learning and practicing typing this and understanding what they mean. Okay, one last thing to mention before we start coding is the script tag found in the body. Okay, look at line 10. Well, line 9 actually starts the body. That's the opening tag. Line 11 is the closing tag of the body. We only have one thing in there right now. And that's line 10, which is the script tag. Okay, script tags are found in the body. Your document is read from top to bottom. So you want this JavaScript to be read last because if it references any of the web page's elements, there may be a delay in the fancy effects you want to apply or it may not work at all. Remember, JavaScript makes your, ma makes your uh, website come alive with lots of different things that it can do. So the script tag references the JavaScript found in this file with the same name. So if we looked, in the script tag, it says SRC, which equals source, source equals script.js. Look all the way to the left. You have index script.js and style.css. So the script that the script.js file is linked from this page to there. Okay, so now on to coding. We are gonna start in the head right now, and we're gonna find the title, which is gonna be in line six. And we're going to replace the title. It says REPL.IT. We're going to replace that with Will's Used Clothing. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this. And let's put Will's, <clears throat> Will's Used. There's our ghostwriter again. Clothing. Will's Used Clothing. Okay, we got it. Will's Used Clothing. Now, the fun part is, see at the top middle, some people have it on the right, some left, but that's the run button. So if we click that, we can see what this looks like. And to the right, oh, nothing. It's still blank. Well, that's because we talked about earlier, anything that goes in the head is not going to be seen on the website. So in, if we want to look and, and put things on the website, we have to go to the body. So let's go to number nine. And number nine, we're going to go to the body and we're going to hit return. And now follow me here. We're going to go to that less sign and then we're going to do H1. Now H1 is called a header or heading rather. And heading, uh, heading is like a title of your page. And that's going to be in the biggest font. It goes from H1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to H6, which is your smallest font. H1 is like, I think, 32 pixels. In any case, we're going to put here, Will's, the title, Will's used, and what do we have? Clothing, Will's used clothing. Will's used clothing. Okay, so now we hit run in the middle, a top middle. Ta-da! Will's used clothing is there. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. It's like magic. Okay, now we're going to add an H2 there. We're going to go to there and hit return. We're going to do that bracket, angle bracket again. And let's do H2 and put another angle bracket in there. 
And then see it that that first one auto, Replit automatically comes up with a closing tag. The the opening tag is H2. The closing tag is forward slash H2. So we hit return. So we have in the center there, and we're gonna put we're gonna put selection. Okay, selection right here. Let's try that selection. Okay, and then we're gonna run it at the top middle. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, there we go, selection. Now you can see the pixels the f is smaller. That's like, what, 24 pixels for H2. And if you if we want to go, let's go and take a look at H6. Uh, it's going to be really tiny. So let's take a quick look at H6. H6. Let's close it. And let's hit return. And let's just put hello. Okay, so that's on H6 right there. Ta -da! Hello. See how tiny that is? I think that's 12 pixels there. So in any case, we don't want that. I am going to delete that. I just wanted you to see what that looks like. And I'm going to give you a resource to, that you can use that has wonderful stuff like that, that you can see uh, see what, what a lot more you can do. We're just going to cover the basics in this tutorial today. So now let's we're going to make a paragraph. So those are head, headings. Now we're gonna do a paragraph. So we need that less than sign. And the paragraph is gonna be called the P. Let's close that up. That's our opening tag. Boom, on the right side is our closing tag. Return. And then we're gonna put some items that we wanna sell. So one, let's put old socks. Sound good, old socks. And then number two, let's put, uh, let's see, how about a shirt? An old shirt we're gonna sell. Number three, let's sell uh, my old boots. Let's do boots. boots. And number four, let's go with, uh, how about an old jacket or a used jacket? It's not old, let's say used jacket. All right, so worn. And that's socks, let's put a, a price on here. So socks, uh, let's charge, let's see, we're gonna say $5 for the pair of socks. Shirt, let's go with $10. Uh, let's see, boots. Uh, boots are not in great shape, but uh, let's try to get, let's see, $15 for the boots. And then my jacket, let's see if we can do $20 on the jacket. Okay, ooh, I'm excited. Ready? We're going to hit the run button at the top. Whoa. Okay, so if you, if it looks, if you go down, it looks like you have four different lines, but in HTML, you have to put a break there, or there's other ways to do it, but I'm gonna teach you the break method. So let's go back up to the socks and let's do a space. Again, the less send sign and break is gonna be BR. Okay, let's close it. Now with a break, you don't need to have an ending tag. It's just break, it's a BR, that's it. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Break, see that? The socks is on one line and then everything else is underneath it. So now we need to do that with all the other ones. So let's put a break on everything else. Okay, and then that's that. Now the boots, come on boots. BR, let's close it. And then let's do my jacket. All right, getting there and let's close that. Okay, now let's run it. I love running it. There we go, Will's used clothing selection. One, two, three, four items we're selling. Now, that's plain HTML. Nothing sexy about it. There's no colors. We haven't changed the background. So that's where we're gonna go to style.css. We want to change colors and fonts and all that good stuff. And probably maybe we wanna center wills to use clothing, okay? So let's click on the left side, style.css. And it has nothing there right now. So number one, the way we do this is, we're gonna go with body. So body, remember the body? The body has everything from Will's used clothes all the way down to jacket, that's $20. That encompasses the body. So right body, space, and then a curly bracket. Hit a curly bracket, return, and then you have the end curly bracket. So let's start out with, how about color? And I think we're gonna do, now you can either hit color property here or just color colon space and then you need a semicolon. Let's do blue. Let's do blue and see what that looks like. How's that? So for the whole body, from wheels closed, all the way down to jacket, it's gonna be blue. Let's see, run it. There, oh, beautiful, love it. Okay, now let's do a background. So let's go outside of that uh, semicolon, hit return, and let's do background color. So back, you can either spell it out or go with what they have there, background. And I'm gonna do the colon, find the colon, there we go. And I am gonna do, let's see, yellow because I'm bright. I like bright colors. Let's see what it looks like. Background is yellow. Dun, da, da, dun. 
Woo! Now they're talking yellow. Very bright. And then, let's see. Uh, wheels to use clothing. I'd like that to be in the center. So what if we do text alignment? Uh, text align right there. And let's hit center. You see that we have that. After that, we've got the semicolon. Let's hit that and see. Ooh, oh, no. It centered everything. So we don't want to center everything. We just want to center Will's used clothing. But since we're in the body and the body says to do everything. So let's get rid of that. All right. Let's get rid of that. We don't want that. And we're going to do that in H1 setting. Okay. So. Now let's go to our heading, our H1 setting. We're gonna go down to line seven. And let's go H1 was the setting we used, was what we used the head, uh, heading. And then let's go to our curly bracket. And then let's do return so we can close that curly bracket. And let's do uh, text align. And how about we do center this time for this? Center and let's re hit run at the top there. And perfect, there you go. Wheels to use clothing in the center. So now let's go to, I want to change the color of selection. Now remember, if we go back to the index, selection is where? Selection is uh, number 11, 12, and 13. It's under H2. So let's go back to style.css and we've got to type in H, sorry about that keyboard guys. Uh, we got to type in H, H2, H, two space and then we got to do the curly bracket return so that we have that space there and then let's do color and i am gonna do let's see color property let's do red and see what that looks like Ooh, nice kind of looks like fast food colored signs doesn't it okay then let's do one more let's go to let's scroll down let's return return let's go down to 15 and let's go with the p for paragraph and let's change that color as well so i'm going to do p space curly bracket open and then return and we're going to do color again and let's see i'm going to do the colon i'm going to spell it out this time and it's nice how it has the semicolon on the right and let's do black. I think we're going to try black for that last one. Let's see what it looks like. Ready? Black. Oh, I like it. So wheels to use clothing selection. Um, and now let's go back to the body and let's see if we can change the font. So we are going to go to, we're going to call it font and family. Click on that. And let's see. Let's see what's another font that we can do. Let's look at, uh, let's see, monospace. Okay, monospace. And then we're going to hit run and see what it looks like. Ooh, hmm, I don't like that so much. It looks kind of strange. I think we're going to go and try Arial. Let's look at Arial. So you go back here, you type in a letter. I'm typing in A, and there's Arial. And then let's hit run. And hmm, I kind of like that. Let's go with that. Let's go with Arial. So we've changed the center to Will's Use Clothing in the center. We've changed the colors and you can actually change the font. So remember I mentioned that uh, the font size, um, that you uh, that H2 is about 24 pixels. So, and H1 is 32 pixels. So let's go to H2 and then let's hit return there and let's put font and then let's find font size there, font size. And how about we do, uh, let's see, H1, which is the, the Will's Use Clothing. How about we do mm, 50? And it's going to blow it up. It's going to blow up 50 PX pixels. Let's see, 50 PX. Ready? Let's try it. Run. Whoa, that's way too big. So, like I said, uh, the H1, which is Will's Use Clothing, is 32 pixels. And then H2 is 24 pixels. So, if we do somewhere between, if we want a little bit bigger, we can do somewhere between 24 and 32. So let's try 28. How's that? Let's try 28 pixels. Let's do 28 and then boom. Hey, that's better. That's better. But you know what? I kind of like it the way it is at 24 pixels. So I am just going to take that whole font size out uh, here, here, here like this. And then we're going to run it again. And mm, I kind of like the way that looks. So that's as far as we're going to go right now with this, with the next video, we're gonna add JavaScript to this. Um, we're gonna link some nice pictures so that people can see what my used socks look like or my used shirt, boots, or jacket. And we're gonna create some buttons as well. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you have learned some of the basics of coding a website today. 
The next video, we will learn JavaScript and add some cool pictures and other features to our website called Will's Used Clothing. I will leave two projects for you to do in the description below if you would like to continue to practice today's tools. I highly recommend it. I will make two videos so you can see what it should look like after you have tried it yourself. Thank you again and see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe below and feel free to leave comments as well. Goodbye everyone!